I would like to talk about more about cross-digital collaboration, which is not very popular thing to talk about, and it's not really happening much as I as I wish. So why do we actually want people to work between different distributions? Because we're basically wasting packagers' time because they have to package in one distribution in one way, in another distribution in a different way, and it's just getting crazy. It's also confusing for the outside people who want to start contributing uh, something like whether to use software or actually contribute uh, some software because it's like, oh, you know, I have Fedora here and I have to do it using these guidelines, but it won't work for open source, uh, so I need to do it in some different way. So that's, that's not good for the community either. So let's take a look at the, some uh, Python and open source stuff. Um, yeah, I even have the internet. So basically, Python is packaged really differently in Fedora and open source. So, for example, in Fedora, we have um, this simple spec file which has you know, a bunch of build requires. We have Python 2 sub package which should die soon, but we have it. You have a bunch of build requires. You have Python 3, the same thing, and you specify Py2, Py3 build. And then you basically duplicate sections for Python. For the OpenSUSE, it looks like this. You just specify um, Python module, whatever, and Python build. You don't have any sub package, you don't have any duplication, you just have it in one place, and it just works magically. But that magic is really horrible inside if you look at it. So, like, after, after we go through the all ecosystems, so I would like to choose some, some example of some language and talk like how can we improve, like what's, uh, what's good in one distribution and what's bad in another, so we can build something which would work for all of us. So, the Ruby, uh, yes, I see you. <laughs> I don't know the entire story behind the Ruby because uh, at some point I heard that uh, OpenSUSE people actually wanted to use Fedora packaging, but they didn't like some aspects. They tried to change Fedora packaging, but there was some conflict, so we ended up with different ways of packaging. So, I know I took some random Ruby gem uh, where we have some awful stuff in the build and in install. Um, I know some copy manually stuff and run checks. I mean, I can read it, but it's not that nice. While in OpenSUSE, you have this spec file. Basically, you just run gem install and gem packages, and it generates all the sub packages. It basically runs all those commands. I know this one looks for me as a person who has no idea about Ruby, it looks much better. I don't know what's the reason why it was so different and why it's, it was not contributed back. If you know the story, you will tell us later. So for the Rust, I'm happy that it's actually the same because uh, basically we have absolutely the same spec file. So basically if you take this spec file and compile it on OpenSUSE or do it other way around, it will, be, it will give you the same results, so you get a bunch of packages and you just have a few simple macro in here. So basically, if you look at the OpenSUSE package, it's basically almost the same except for dynamic build requires. You have all those bunch of the packages and all the macros are the same. Golang is yet another level of complexity because recently, um, Nicolas started to rework Golang packaging without talking to anybody outside, even and even inside of Fedora. So it's just overcomplicated. Even in Fedora, it's not consistent. So I'm, I'm going to skip that part. So just some uh, useful tips, like when you want to start some project about something, anything related to RPM packaging, basically talk to people before you actually start working on it. Because I figured out that. Many people don't know about some RPM features which they could use, for example, uh, generating the runtime requires on the, on the files and things like that. You know, just talk to people and they will help you. Yeah, 
if you actually um, started working on something and you decide, oh, this is a really bad idea, I need to change it. Don't just, yeah, I'm doing this change, I'm pushing it to Fedora, I'm done. Basically talk to people from the other distros which are using your code and make sure that they're aware of what you want to do. Take into account their input, what they think about this change and yeah. So another thing which can help with this is basically you need to get some common place where you can talk to people. So for example, in case of Rust, we got um, Fedora Rust RC channel where we have actually uh, guys from OpenSUSE, Maje, um, Debian on the Fedora Rust. Yes, they are also contributing to some extent. Uh, if you don't really have some place, some strong opinion where to put, you can use RPM ecosystem mailing list. And there is even RPM extras Git repo. So basically, idea was that you uh, you have some your ecosystem and you can put here your all your macros and this package could be shared between the distros, but nobody put anything here <laughs> so far. Yeah, there are some bunch of scripts which are different between distros. I know I don't like this situation, but it's just people should go there, submit pull requests, and other people look on it, and basically at some point you will get to some point where you can share the code between distros. Yeah, don't try to be too clever. For example, the Golang packaging is just a bunch of Lua, I don't know, probably more than 1,000 lines of Lua, which is rewriting spec inside multiple times somehow. So instead of just going to the RPM and asking them, hey, I want dynamic sub-packages. I'm missing this feature. I want to do this. Can you add support for it? Well, RPM is different than it used to be like probably seven years ago. It's possible to change it. It's not that hard. You just need to talk to RPM guys and file tickets and we'll get some stuff done because we got dynamic build requires, we got tilde, we got caret versions, I know. We got some kind of new rich dependencies where, where you can specify uh, I want package foo more equals 100 and at the same time less than 200. Like people were trying to create some workarounds using conflicts or multiple requires or things like that, but we can get it better. Yeah, and obviously always talk to people. So now getting more to the details, do you have some preference which language where we should take and talk about it? Ruby, Python? Python. Python. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. Basically, one of the things which I kind of like about OpenSUSE and not really nice in Fedora is that uh, basically the idea is in Fedora we ship only one Python free foo. But in OpenSUSE, they actually build all the packages for all versions of supported Pythons. Is that something what we would like to do? Or no. it's, why not? Yeah, they, they do the same with the Python. There's no reason for, for, for it. And from my point of view, the decision was years ago like to have one Ruby because if you try to target multiple versions of Ruby, then you have to, you don't never know which package would support which version properly and so on. You cannot. But you, you, you build a package for multiple versions, you run the test for all Ruby versions yeah, and. But you can exclude some some version of Ruby and but say. Then, then you don't have the ecosystem. So if you yeah. decide you have one Ruby, you can at least target for one Ruby and make uh, try to make all the packages in the distro to work with the one version of Ruby you have in the system. But if you target multiple versions of of uh, language, then you have multiple uh, problems. I think the reason is we don't have enough people to do this properly. You mean for the interpreter or for the like packager side? For the ecosystem to work on multiple interpreter versions. We just don't have enough people. I think if you would actually 
magically turn on multiple builds, people will actually try to fix them? No. no? <laughs> But then what is the reason why do we actually package those things if we actually, for other versions of Python, we want... You can... It's not, because it's not about installing Ruby or Python, it's about installing the application uh, which is written by clients in Python and Ruby and we want to have the nice, I don't know what is written, what, app, what big application is written in, uh, in Python, for example, but no, you, yeah, for example, you want to be able to install the clone builder via RPM, that's the ultimate goal because you don't want to fiddle with all the binary uh, requirements you need to build the binary extensions for, for whatever. I mean, if, you, if you're not developing for Fedora or packaging for Fedora, there's little reason to use RPM install libraries. Well, there are uh, things which you actually cannot do pip install, like the... Yes, the system well, it's not really system specific, but because uh, people create the bindings, but they don't publish on PyPI. Well, that, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a problem, I think, for every ecosystem. So what I would like to get rid out of in those spec files, I don't mean in PBR, but uh, yeah, nowadays we actually generate uh, automatically those requires. Actually, not many people know that we actually do that. So if uh, I look at the, some Python, oh sure, better? Yeah. I don't know, some, so basically those, those dependencies are automatically generated, but for some reason people still, uh, still put them in the spec files manually, so, Probably one of the things we could do is basically clean up the stuff because actually in OpenSUSE they implemented uh, this uh, dependency generation, I know, two, three years ago. So basically one step to get closer might be, uh, so if we're looking at Python, I had somewhere opened it here. I know probably one thing to make it a bit better, and uh, let's uh, we can define in Fedora Python build, which will be Python free build. In the end, I know what this Python expand does. To be honest, we can create some uh, some shims for it, so we can actually share share the packages. Uh, basically, they have since they have multiple versions of Python. They, uh, for each version of Python, they want to execute some command. So I guess this is like uh, changing Python side lib to every version of Python and removes the directory in there. Uh, well, in Fedora, we can just say Python expand is macro, which expands to nothing. So you would remove just the, that one there. So. What else? Um, yeah, uh, another thing which came to my mind is why don't we actually generate the uh, file lists automatically? Because for example, in Java, they, they actually do that. So they, after MVM Maven install, they actually, it automatically generates some file which you pass files minus F. Why don't we do that? No, you won't. You won't know about it. Well, you know, uh, if if I have an asterisk somewhere or a folder, I want the whole folder. What, what if they add a file at a completely different location? I, I don't know about it. Well, if you if you are using Firelist, you pay the price. For example, now we have license for Perla in Mark. If there will be a license, uh, whatever new uh, new suffixes used for some different markdown, 
What what about uh, to for example Amazon? I think they created some tool in Rust, which is actually uh, going through the list of the files and tries to think is is that license file? Is that license file? So we can actually use something like that to detect. Well, you do because you run unpack for some tarballs. The, the file command is not trustable and we changed in, in <laughs> like just detecting Ruby files changed several times in the past 10 years. The output changes from version to version and uh, you cannot trust the results of, of this. So uh, you either have uh, wrongly identified files and you say that's fine or you need manual labor to list the files and let the packager mark them. So, so uh, we have this tool called uh, pip2rpm, which only generates the spec files, and it does a lot of guesswork to try to do everything right. And the guesswork is just unmaintainable. So what, uh, what are you trying to guess there? You never want to guess like, what's, what a license file is. For Ruby, we have gem2rpm, which generates this file list, so it's not manual work, but then it's up to the maintainer to review the list. Of course, like if you're updating the package, you see, ah, there is no change in the diff, so probably nothing changed. Or you can see, or you can change, you can check the diff in upstream to see if it needs updates and, and so on. But I also prefer the explicit list over, over some file lists generated, where you don't know what is included in the package. If, if, the, if there's a standard, like Well, uh, we so actually in Rust, th there is uh, some special field like license file and readme file or something like this. It doesn't work if you have multiple license files, but that's a different story. So uh, basically what we're talking with the RPM folks is uh, we can actually implement something like this in RPM. So basically uh, you can get most of the parts like license and probably readme. It might be sometimes not working properly, but do you really care if some of the files is marked as the license, which should not be? Like, is that really a big problem? It's not about the size, so if we don't care, or if it's not a problem, then why we mark them at all? So, uh, like, if we should mark them, then we should mark them properly. If we should not mark them, then we simply don't care. So if I, uh, if I understand correctly, basically the license was invented because uh, people do minus minus no docs or exclude docs uh, in the installation. So they don't get license file, which is probably violating some, some licensing. So they decided to have license, which is not getting excluded when you run minus minus no docs. So I would say it's really minor use case and like it's better to uh, to have some wrongly identified files marked as a license because it won't affect probably some really, really minimal installations which actually want to exclude documentation, for example. Well, but you uh, check the licenses, like you're talking about the like license field, not like the license, like person license, like or both. I'm pretty sure, uh, I, I don't know, 500 packages out of Relate uh, don't have license files in the person license, but they have it person doc. I'm, like I didn't look at those packages, but I'm pretty sure they are like that. No, it's not because of the review, but because it's not automated. So if you want to change some doc to license, so you introduce a new field, and uh, that means like somebody has to go everywhere and fix it. And if you have uh, some kind of auto detection, you just change that part, which is automatically detecting it and marks its. I'm not sure if you can define standard, but you definitely can.
You can get it correct to some extent. Yes, but <laughs> yeah, because uh, basically even talking about Python, where uh, basically there is that project about creating uh, dynamic build requires, like you cannot, uh, like people are not going to validate all the requires which are generated automatically, whether it's build requires or requires, they just rely on that they're correct there. Most, yes. most of the time they're, they are, but Sometimes they're not, so I think so the license is. Then it's an upstream yeah, but probably. Yeah. But there is a standard bill upstream that says these are the list of the dependencies. So if you have a problem, you just fix it upstream. It's not. And is there something for Python which says this is the license files? Yeah. So let's propose it to the yes. Python. There's a lot of things we need to propose. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. But it's Spirix metadata, which are not the federal but metadata. But you can convert it. Yeah, convert it. With, but, but again, it's not 100% convertible between, between these two license sets. Well, you can convert from SPDX to Fedora. Like, not the other way around, but from SPDX to Fedora. Because we have just BSD in Fedora, but the SPDX defines 50 of BSDs. That's actually what we do in the uh, Rustor PM. So we have uh, this Bishek contributed that uh, that file, which is um, yeah. yeah, I don't know how it's generated to be honest. But basically, you have list of SPDX and the federal li uh, license and probably some comment. Yeah, that's nice, but again, this is Rust specific. No, it's not. It's SPDX to federal license so list. Well, because uh, you cannot generate license field in the RPM, so it was. We can definitely create some macro in RPM which says uh, SPDX convert and put SPDX identifiers there, and Fedora will have Fedora names. Would that work? What do you mean? Like you have to, if you write uh, in the spec file like uh, SPDX to Fedora and uh, SPDX license identifier, then you have this SPDX file license identifier in the spec file, but not the Fedora identifier, it should be there. No, it will be, because uh, macro it expense... Will be in the, in the, it will be in the SRPM, but not in the spec file. Yeah, but we don't have many things in the spec file which are in SRPM. Why? You don't need anything extra. Like, you don't need the files to put something in the license list. Uh, the license already needs to be stated in the spec file yes. before it gets converted into SRPM. It's why? I mean, the, the you know, original sources for a federal package is the SRPM, which contains the spec file, not the spec file by itself. So what is the original source? The source spec file? The SRPM. 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 Oh. Right. Then we should ask uh, Spot what is the correct. Well, we have to store SRP, uh, SRPM for the legal purposes. Yeah. So the SRPM is the source, not like Git repo. Yeah, the is just one part of the source. Well, it's like chicken and egg, because what is first? The, the SRPM or spec file? The problem is that the uh, spec file gets basically reprocessed. Yeah. But it, so the you, you say you, you couldn't even start the build without knowing the license. Yeah, but there is some preprocession step. And that means that the original source is the non pre non pre processed but, file. But downloading the sources is also a pre processing, right? They're not pre processing them, they're just transferring them. <laughs> 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 For example, uh, dynamic build requires is uh, kind of similar to the license field because you need to have build requires to start the build, but it's not necessarily true because you can now generate it. So like, you need some build requires to be able to generate another build requires. So we can uh, make, for example, this 
well, whether it will be just macro which is converting SPDX names to federal names or does some more magic, we can do that. So are you going to submit some PEP? Something like proposal? Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a couple of things we need to do before that, like uh, test requirements. So 5.4.5? <laughs> no, but you know, it's, it's always hard to decide. For example, the Ruby spec example you've shown. Uh, there were times where a setup macro in RPM was not ever about gem files and would not expand them. I spent, for example, probably four years pushing these two upstream and getting these two further up. Uh, well, it's, it were, improved. So, so the guys were not that patient and they were too quick and they introduced their new macros uh, covering all this behind. So what's the better approach? Have like the uh, gem expansion uh, support in RPM or provide uh, some macro which overrides a lot of or hides a lot of stuff? And you cannot get rid of this I would like to get it in the RPM instead. Fine. I would I would like to get it in the RPM properly. But then you have to wait. Then no. you have to wait. And you cannot it, simplify your your spec file. Well it it's improving because I remember when I just started to contribute into RPM, like that till the support in Fedora it took I know ten years to, to get it and it was backported to I know RHEL six because it was the concern. It's actually improved now. Yeah, but we don't have to be different in, in this case. Do you have some some example of the proper one? Because I just took a random one, which was updated not so long time ago. Yeah, but that's the example of which probably is not using the setup uh, to expand the gem yet. I don't know from the top of my uh, which. So basically, I was talking to the Susie guys. Uh, you see the, the yeah, it's used there gem. There are four steps in the prep section. Nowadays, you can use just the setup. Hmm? Oh, sure. Two minutes. <laughs> okay, so basically, the whole thing, what I wanted to say is, basically the SUSE guys, I talked to them on the Open SUSE conference in, in May in Nuremberg, they were open for any changes, they were open to actually get it in the RPM upstream to have some better way of defining sub-packages or do some crazy stuff in, so that will be more closer. So. Probably from Fedora side, we can also, like for example, if we want license file, let's get it in the Python upstream and then get it in the RPM upstream, so all distros benefit from that. Would it work? <laughs> well, we can in Fedora say that we are not going to build them, like the macros will be same, everything will look same, but in Fedora we'll say we're not building multiple versions, we're building only one version. I mean, you would still have... We would have to have no alt macros. Yeah, like is that a problem or... Well, there are, for example, hard decisions <laughs> like... We have no alt macros. <laughs> Don't remind me about LD config, please. <laughs>